Do you think it would ever be possible to create artificial gravity in space? That, that, that's a big physics question there, guys. <laughs> Anybody want to tackle that one? Hi, Jordan. Uh, this is Terry Verts here, and that's a great question because one of the hard things about long-duration spaceflight is uh, the human body dealing with weightlessness and a lack of gravity. And one way you can create gravity is to spin things. Uh, if you take a bucket of water or paint, you can spin it around, and you'll notice that the water stays pressed up against the bucket because you're accelerating it. And so you can artificially create that acceleration that makes you feel like you're in gravity just by rotating something like a centrifuge. So it is possible, but to do that, it requires a really large structure. And um, so that's something that we haven't done here on the space station, but that's one way you could do it. That was a great question. All right, uh, we've got, we need a, a Michigan. We gotta make sure every state is represented here. What's your name? Shanae. Okay, go ahead and introduce yourself, Shanae. I was just wondering, what kind of training did you have to go through before you were able to get into space? That was Shanae, from Michigan. Well, that's a great question. You know, it takes a, a lot of experience to be an astronaut, and it's not just in one field. Uh, we've all been through many, many years of school, but also experience in our own fields. We have engineers, scientists, mathematicians, medical doctors, and physicists. We have quite a range of experience that become astronauts. And the important thing is that you have a good, solid background in the technical fields, the science, the technology, the engineering, and the math to build on that. Because once everyone comes uh, and is selected as an astronaut, we all train generically for space flight, and then we train specifically for our mission. For the International Space Station, it's a very complicated and very large spacecraft, so the training is over multiple years just for a specific flight. For the space shuttle being a shorter duration flight of just a couple of weeks, we still train for over one year just specifically on the task that we'll accomplish on our mission. So it's quite a, a bit of time, but it certainly is worth it. Uh, it's quite rewarding to us to be able to execute the mission that we've been training for for so long. And uh, I think we need to have at least one Floridian. Is that right? Yes. That, oh, we already had a Floridian. Uh, do we have every state covered so far? Here? <laughs> All right. We've got a, we've got time for a couple more questions. Uh, we, we were going to get a little gender balance here. This young man. Down here. What's your name? Joseph. Joseph. Hold on one second. We got a question from Joseph from Nebraska. Um, are there any recognizable landmarks that you can see from space? Yeah, the, you know, the, the rumor was is that uh, you can see the Great Wall from space, but uh, uh, I'm not sure that's true. So uh, are there at least, if there aren't man-made landmarks, are there some uh, natural landmarks uh, other than continents that you can see? Yes, Mr. President and Joseph, that's a great question. Actually, uh, the one of the great achievements in this mission, we have a great window, big window, that we are really fascinated by the great view of the Earth. And uh, yes, we can see a lot of great landmarks. We can see the Golden Gate Bridge, the great uh, skyscrapers in New York, and uh, Grand Canyon is just breathtaking. And uh, also, uh, while in the night pass, we can see all the lights. That means that the humans are uh, uh, active active even in the night and uh, this is uh, a great uh, uh, benefits that we all uh, benefit from being in space well, there you go. all right we've got uh, looks like I've got a couple more questions hold on what's your name Barbara. this is Barbara from Florida. from Florida hold on hi I'm curious about the thoughts and emotions that you guys feel when you're in space There you go.
lonely, you feel a little claustrophobic. Vertigo. <laughs> Well, that's a that's an excellent question, and I and I think that probably it, it ranges um, uh, quite a bit over the period of a space shuttle mission, and I expect it probably varies uh, quite a bit over the range of a long duration mission. Um, kind of starting off uh, for the shuttle mission, um, at least for me, I, I've done that twice now. Uh, you kind of get into orbit, and you're just kind of finding uh, the equivalent of your sea legs, if you will. And so you're you've you've arrived on orbit, and you kind of have a, a feeling of joy, having having a Accomplished it. Your your body has just gone through kind of a, a little bit of a violent experience uh, through the launch, and you have a little bit of a adrenaline probably getting out of your system. So it's a little bit of a joyous, giddy moment at the same time that uh, you're disoriented as you uh, deal with the first uh, first couple of hours of actually being on orbit. After after that passes, after a, a couple of days, it uh, for me it was a kind of a sense of uh, wonder as you as you explore what you can do in zero gravity and the things that you can see out the window and and just how the in, entire complex works together to make it happen. So it's just a, a sense of wonder. After a little while after that, I think uh, you start to think a little bit about the people who are back on Earth that uh, are most uh, precious to you, and then that the little bit of a loneliness can kick in and. Uh, one of the really nice things that we have and the uh, long duration crews have is the opportunity to use a uh, telephone or to perform a video conference uh, similar to like we're doing uh, with you guys uh, with our families. And I think that's uh, really important for folks to, to maintain that contact uh, when you're up here uh, on orbit. Of course, you have your crew members, but uh, you do really want to maintain those uh, precious relationships with uh, all your, your family members and friends that are on the ground. And, and they do a remarkable job actually supporting us uh, while we're in space to make sure that we can still speak with our families and that our, our families are informed and uh, uh, able to stay in contact with us. But uh, all those emotions kind of wrap up together. Um, kind of the final one is uh, kind of when you do return to Earth and, and kick off all those relationships that whether they were two weeks or six months later have uh, time has passed and, and you have to kind of rebuild them a little bit. But uh, it's it's a very joyous experience um, and a, and a, something that you you can share with uh, both the people on the ground and the the people who are part of your crew uh, throughout the entire mission. Great question. All right, all right. So I think we're going to make this the last question. We've been keeping you guys over time. Uh, uh, so what's your name? Alex. This this is Alex. Hold on one second. Does being up in space allow you to see things such as the weather? Like, could you see the storm over Washington? Well, that's a good point. Uh, obviously, we're using a lot of satellite imagery these days, and, and this is going to be a major focus of some of the work NASA is doing here uh, at home, uh, thinking about how we can get better information about our own climate. Uh, is that something that you guys are tracking from the space station? Well, we, uh, we have the opportunity to view a lot of the weather phenomena. We've seen many uh, hurricanes and uh, typhoons uh, and, and whatnot around the world. We can see uh, fronts crossing continents. Uh, we see the whole variety of cloud formations. Uh, we sometimes can see the aftermath of a storm um, uh, or other uh, uh, major uh, impact on the Earth uh, after the, the sky clears. So there's a a whole lot of details that we can see here from the space station and observe you know every day we can see things we pass over the uh, the same portion of the earth every day so it's a regular uh, observation that we can make over a period long period of time as well well listen you guys have been uh, uh, extraordinarily generous with your time uh, I just want to repeat and I think I speak for all the young people here and uh, everybody back home, uh, how proud we are of you, how excited we are uh, about the work that's being done on the space station, uh, and uh, how committed we are to continuing uh, human space exploration uh, in the future. So uh, you guys continue to be great pioneers uh, and, and great role.